It is my honor to welcome everyone to the announcement of Coffee by Design's 2015 Rebel Blend Fund winners. So thank you all for coming. Um, my name is Mary Allen Lindemann, and I am co-owner with my partner, Alan Spear, of Coffee by Design. And I, I can tell you that there, every day is a great day in coffee here at Coffee by Design, but there are days that are very near and dear to our heart. And I have to say the announcement of our Rebel Blend winners is particularly meaningful to us. Um, hard to believe this is the 18th year for the Rebel Blend Fund. And, and just to give you a little history of how the Rebel Blend started, when we first began the business in 1994, and many of you have heard me talk about the 40% vacancy rate in downtown Portland. So imagine Congress Street and 40% empty spaces there. But one of the other uh, groups that were really heavily impacted were, were the arts organizations and a number of art galleries and venues were, that used to show art closed because of the recession. And that's when, when Alan and I came back to Maine and Open Coffee by Design, part of our commitment was giving back to the arts community. And so we started our Rebel Blend Fund. And for those of you who don't know, hopefully you do, we have a coffee called Rebel Blend. And it says on our package that a dollar of every pound goes into our artist fund. And so, <laughs> come on, you can show it. I know, use my Vanna White, I don't know. It's <laughs> but, uh, but anyhow, I think that what's really exciting is as the fund has grown, when you look at the history of people who have been actually given the grant money, it's so exciting to see what happens and the stories that they share of. This was the vote of confidence that got my project moving forward. Many of the projects we fund are under the radar or they're considered or were considered at the time controversial. And so really giving people seed money to get these projects off the ground has been really instrumental. And it's the stories I hear about this project got going or I was able to get additional grant monies because I could show that I had received money somewhere else or just the fact that you believed in me gave confidence that I could actually move it forward. And I should say that it's not that Alan and I are the ones who give the vote of confidence because it's actually a team of Coffee by Design staff members who make the deciding votes on this project. We do a call for proposals once a year and then our staff select a committee that are made up of retail staff members, roastery, and our management team. They are the ones who, from the proposals we receive, choose the recipients and the amount of money that they receive. So again, it's an amazing tradition, and to see the stories of how these different recipients have really grown their seed money into great projects, not only for the state of Maine, but throughout the country. Many of these projects have gone on nationally. It's been really exciting for us to see. But without further ado, I would actually like to announce this year's winners. And I can tell you that years of getting the call for proposals out and getting a fair number of applications, but wondering, gee, why aren't there more? Well, this year we got that, boy, there are more. And so our committee had a very challenging decision and actually chose four recipients out of 22. And I have to say 22 of really competitive applications for this year. So what I'd like to do is announce each winner actually give them their check and give them a moment to talk briefly about their project. I'll tell you a little bit about them, but let them speak from their own hearts about their project. We'd like to then take a photograph with them and then I will announce the next winner. So Alan, maybe if you can help me hand out the checks. Yes. Give me the coffee back. So. The first recipient is Hannah Rosengren. I hope I pronounced last names correctly. Let me know if I don't. Her project, Cultivating a Pollinator, the Friendly Yard, a Seasonal Guide for Mainers. To address the rapidly declining population of bees, Rosengren created a poster in 2013 illustrating plants known to attract bees. The illustration went viral. Since then, she has shifted her focus to Maine specifically, outlining steps residents can take to help all native pollinators and to care for their yards in an eco-friendly way going beyond not just what to plant, but why and how. The funds will be used to produce a seasonally specific illustrated zine to communicate this information in a user-friendly way. We have information online that's listed here on our poster, hannahrosengreen.com, but in the meantime, I'd like to welcome Hannah to the podium.
This is a project that I've been really wanting to work on for almost a year now, so I was just so grateful for Coffee by Design support uh, when I found out that I could go ahead and make something that I could distribute throughout Maine. Um, I was really excited because I feel like this is an issue that isn't very approachable and I think that illustration can be a really good way of communicating environmental issues. So I'm very excited. Thank you. Next I'd like to introduce Leslie McVeigh. Her project, White Like You Mommy, is really um, critical. I mean, every project here, it's amazing. They are art projects, but the political statement, the important issues these projects are addressing, I can't tell you how important and how thankful all of us here in the state of Maine are for these artists. Literally, there are two main goals for the project. One is to introduce people to the documentary storytelling through video medium and to create a visual personal piece that reflects a part of the population that is not normally recognized. The project grew out of the artist's experience when putting her then three-year-old biracial daughter to bed. It opened her eyes to the responsibilities that come with mothering a child of color in the USA, with the added complexity of being a white mother whose heritage was not fraught with racist prejudice. This documentary film shares the stories of white mothers, their black children, and in some cases, their grandchildren. These stories are an increasingly important part of the changing face of the new Maine. I'd like to introduce Leslie McVeigh. Um, this is a story, this uh, project has actually been sitting with me for 29 years. Um, and the birth of my granddaughter uh, just sort of pushed me to really get up and do something about it and this grant is is really going to to help and I hope it will um, explain some of the the differences in um, a white and black family that um, right now in history we're having so many racial problems that maybe this will help a little bit in understanding um, some of the differences in the demographic that hasn't been dealt with before. Thank you. Next we have Salvage Crafts, which was submitted by David Fraser Johnson uh, through USM's Enactus organization. And I, it's always nice when, uh, and we've had this happen a few times, that we've had former Coffee by Design staff members who we know do great things, and they do great things, and then they win Rebel Blend grants. So Fraser is one of those people who near, near and dear. The Salvage Crafts Project is managed by Enactus at the University of Southern Maine. The group will implement this project through Creative Work Systems and their Yes Arts Works program to offer an opportunity for individuals living with developmental disabilities to generate their own source of income. It will simultaneously reduce the amount of non-recycled paper waste being disposed of by local businesses. Participants will be taught to make handmade crafts, specifically craft paper, through a special process using recycled paper products. Project leads will then assist in marketing these products throughout Maine as well as online, creating income for those artists who are making the, the, the crafts. So I'd like to have Fraser come to the podium. Um, really can't begin to say how grateful we are for this. We've been working so hard to get this project off the ground since February. And I'm just so, so excited to watch this project flourish and make it grow over the next year. Um, to the Rebel Fund Committee, thank you uh, so much for this opportunity. And to Mary Allen and Allen, thank you so much for your commitment to giving back to the community. Our last recipient, and I was joking with Leandra, I feel like you should just set up residence here. <laughs> because we have a very close relationship now with the Burundi community both here in Portland as well as at Origin because of our Burundi coffee project. The final recipient of this year's Rebel Blend grant is the main Burundi drumming World Connect, which Leandre Habinimana, and I'm going to pronounce your last name really incorrectly, and the Batimbo Beats. 
In 2011, a group of Burundians living in Portland and trained in the ritual dance of Burundi drum organized to form the, Burundi be the Batimbo Beats. Since its creation, the group has shown its commitment to Southern Maine by performing throughout the area. And if any of you have not had the opportunity, and we've had them perform here twice, I encourage you, if they're performing, make the time to see them. The group addresses the needs of the Burundi community while introducing its unique form of dance to the area. The Batimbo Beats use their performance to promote societal development and grow awareness of cultural diversity in Maine. They will use their Rebel Blend funding to purchase materials, particularly those that they can only acquire from Burundi, such as the skins to repair their drums and the traditional costumes they wear. So I'd like to welcome Leandre to the stage. Hey, I'm really very excited to be one of the winners. And, uh, this is going to create new opportunities for the group of Batimbo Beats, the Burundi drummers. And um, I think we'll be able to, to get new equipment to keep being connected to the, the community here. And um, it's also a great opportunity to get connected with different generations and different people from different origins. Thank you so much for Thank you. I also, in addition to receiving checks, I want to acknowledge a, a really powerful partnership we have with our bank, Anderskogen Bank, and when we were purchasing the Diamond Street building and we're meeting with different banks, one of the things that at least the Anderskogen folks said was important to them was our community involvement. And so as soon as they loaned us the money to purchase and renovate the building, we then said, well, now prove to us what you can do for us. <laughs> After they'd given us a significant amount of money, which was important, but now prove that the community piece is important. And what Anders Goggin has offered in partnership, which is so critically important, is the marketing of the Rebel Blend winners. And so in the November 30th issue of Maine Biz, there will actually be this ad announcing the winners, which includes links to their sites and email addresses. So people who are interested in finding out more about these projects have an opportunity to learn more and hopefully will help continue to fund these outstanding projects. So thank you to Anders Goggin Bank for being our partner. And thank you for coming here today.